I'm Chris, and today we're going to make an AR-15. Let's do this real quick. Now one of the very first things you want to do, especially if you're working with a firearm, if it's any type of a firearm that shoots a projectile, whether it be a BB gun, a pellet gun, paintball gun, you know, airsoft rifle, I don't care what it is, definitely do a safety check. It begins with keeping your finger off the trigger, making sure there's nothing chambered in there, checking your magazine, making sure there's nothing in your magazine, double checking again. If you want to go ahead and throw a chamber flag in there, be my guest. It's all up to you. Otherwise, you're pretty much ready to go and ready to start tracing this thing out. If you don't have the particular gun you want to trace out, go ahead and do an image search for a silhouette of that gun. It's going to make life just a little bit easier. Tracing it out on poster board is going to be easier in the long run than using cardboard. Then once you pretty much have everything traced out, you may want to do a few details. So it's not going to be exact, but it's going to be a more simplified version. Any of the corners and stuff I like to round over and such. Some of the other ones I might just round over just a little bit where I really want to keep hard edges, but everything else where your hands are going to go or you might accidentally hit somebody with it or something like that, I like to round everything out. So once we're to this point, it's really time to go ahead, use some sort of a straight edge if you want or scissors, whatever you have available, and start cutting this thing out. You're going to want to cut the 2x4 down to a thickness that you desire. I find about an inch thick works really well. You definitely want to use caution when doing this step. With that blade all the way up, you're going to be exposed to a lot of potential danger. Use your push sticks, work safe, and be smart about it. Now unfortunately what I have to do is flip the piece over and then ease my blade up into the wood until I cut about halfway through and then repeat the whole process on the other side. If anybody knows of an easier and safer way to cut a piece of wood like this, please leave a comment below. For the smaller pieces of 2x4, I like to use this little jig I made up. It really holds the 2x4 in there nice and secure. I don't have to worry about it wobbling around or anything like that. And more importantly, it keeps me on the other side of the fence, away from the blade, just in case anything should ever happen. Now that we have the wood cut down to size, we're pretty much just going to trace this out right on the wood. We're going to use a couple different pieces for all the pieces here. Really the stock, the barrel, part of the upper is going to be out of the one piece of 2x4. The pistol grip, the lower the magazine is going to be out of uh, maybe three pieces of 2x4. It's time to go ahead and just start tracing this out. You can kind of see how all this is going to come together and what we need to cut out. Now you can cut this out with a scroll saw, a jigsaw, a band saw, whatever you have, even hand tools. Just be safe. I found it was a little easier to work with when I would go ahead and clamp the 2x4 down to my workbench and use my jigsaw. Now my jigsaw was definitely easier to work with than using the scroll saw, especially when I was doing most of the straight cuts. I can go ahead and set up a little fence system to really get a nice straight cut. And if you have a lot of detailed work to do, you might want to consider using a scroll saw. Just be mindful of the thickness of the wood that you're using and the capability of the scroll saw itself. You can really see how it's all coming together. Now there's a few things I'm probably going to do. Obviously we got to sand it like crazy, work on some of the details, route some of the edges, glue some pieces together, cut some edges off. So we'll just keep plugging away. With this project I definitely found myself doing a lot of sanding. Now this may not be the correct and proper way to use a belt sander, but it was one of the easiest ways for me to accomplish what I wanted to get done. And while working safe and slow, I had no issues. I'm just going to route a few of the edges with the roundover bit before I start gluing pieces together. For some of the smaller pieces like the lower and the pistol grip, I used a clamp to help hold everything when I was routing the edges. That router bit is spinning at such a high RPM, I couldn't even imagine what it would do to my fingers if they accidentally got caught in there. While working on the trigger of the lower, I found that using a Forstner bit and drilling two holes slightly offset from each other 
really helped in making this trigger. And then going ahead and using my scroll saw to cut that little piece out that was left in the middle, and then finishing it up with some sanding and routing. Don't forget, that router bit is spinning at such a high RPM. If you don't feel comfortable doing something on your router, please don't do it. Work safe. There's always an alternative way to accomplish your goal. And really, it's just time to start gluing this together. Now that the glue is dried, it's really time to give this a nice final sand. While the glue was drying, I made some extra pieces like the mag release, the extractor, charging handle, front sights, rear sights. Now you don't have to include these pieces. The gun is just as much fun the way it is, but I figured I had some extra time. I might as well make these pieces and see how it looks, see if I like it, see what I like, and how it all goes together. For the final sand, I really want to pay close attention to all the curves and all the round over parts to make sure that there's no jagged edges, no splinters, nothing anybody's going to get hurt on. I really want to make it as smooth as possible, make a nice finish to this thing, and especially if I'm going to go ahead later on and seal it up with some boiled linseed oil, I want a nice product at the end. My final sanding is pretty much done, I just have to hand sand a few spots. I'm going to start gluing on this stuff. Let me know if you guys really like this on here if you want it plain. I wonder. It's, a, it's kind of a toss up. I'd be curious to know what everybody thinks, so definitely leave a comment below. Otherwise, let's start gluing this together. I can see how it could be really easy to go crazy with a build like this. Stick it as detailed as possible. It would be a lot of fun, but considering that this is going to be something for my son, I know he's going to beat it up and such over time. It's going to be thrown on the ground and such like that. Or even my daughter's going to take it from him and then she's, you know, going to throw it on the ground and break something and I'm going to be re-gluing certain parts together. So the more I add, it's just more I'm going to have to fix. But it's definitely been a fun and enjoyable build. And honestly, I wouldn't mind making a real detailed one and then hanging it on the wall. I think that'd be pretty cool. A few things I would like to do that I'm not sure if I'm going to is right here is the magwell. I'd like to make the mag larger. So I suppose I could just cut this off, route it over with a round over bit, make another magazine, glue it on there and be done with it. But then the extractor hole, I'd like to make something in there, even if it's just a little indentation, just to give it a little bit of depth. But I'm not sure I'm really going to do that. I'm going to have to do a couple test pieces or something first, just to make sure I don't ruin anything. Otherwise, this thing's pretty much done. I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video helpful in making this AR-15, please leave a comment below. Thank you guys so much.